Alrighty, welcome back. It's Friday and we are on air. We've got the sign on. We're on air. Uh, today what I'm going to do is I have the hood inside. Uh, we did a little video. I think Jolene put it on Facebook. I think me, me loading the primer on it. I probably put four to five coats of uh, feather fill on this. And I did, not, I did not give it any flash time, I just put it on. And the reason I did not wait in between coats, or I do not wait in between coats, is because I find when I mix it up in the, in the can, if I wait too long, then it, then it becomes hard and I can't spray it. So basically what I do is I, I spray it on. I just spray it on, uh, let it set for a, cup, for a minute or two, and then I spray on another coat. Let it set for a little bit, spray on another coat. I, I get it on there. And I try to get it on there as quick as I can because I do not want it going hard before I get it on there. And this, this is the reason why I feel like it's okay because I'm, I'm as I explain it to you. When I look inside the can, that's what's left over, and, and I've broken it out a few times, nothing happens when it's that thick. It, it all goes together. It, 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 not, nothing happens that I've, I've never noticed. And I take notice of that stuff when I'm applying it on. Uh, you never, you, you know, people say we have to give it time to adhere or time to flash off or whatever. Well, the, well, the can, stuff I leave in the can does not have time to flash off and nothing happens to that. So why would I think anything would happen to the top of the hood? You know, I want to put it on there before it goes bad. Before I start sanding the hood, Let's take a look at the window. We got the window. Last night, me and me and Sparkles, she's sparkling today, boy. She's sparkling today. She woke up at seven, looking like a ten and a half. Uh, we went to town this morning, and we got some. I don't know what it is. Just some white board. It had the right thickness. It was a buck fifty, and I could cut it with a razor blade. <laughs> you know, I, I would have not cut the plexiglass. If I known, I could have got this for a buck fifty. So next time I just start doing my windows, I'm going to the dollar store, and I'm getting this. It's a buck fifty. You can cut it with a razor blade. Poof, poof, poof. Done. Bitty bang. Done. Uh, what I've got going on over here, we we left off with this yesterday. Come take a look, sweetheart. When when I take my door top off, and I put it back on, a lot of people didn't get to see this. When I put my, you can see my felt and my chrome is perfectly on my three quarter inch square tubing. It's perfectly setting in there. When you look down through the top of this, there's enough gap for the sheet, the piece of metal that I had right there. And it shows on the other side too. That's just the distance it is. It worked out absolutely perfect. So three, th three quarter inch square tubing. When I go to push it in as far as it can go, that's as far as it goes. Uh, there's a gap in behind there, which allows for my top to go down and behind. No, have to do anything. So what that means is that my screw is only going to be able to go to the end of this. You know, when I put that in there, I'm not going to screw in any further. I'm just going to, it's just going to come to the end of this. And that's fine. That's all it needs to do. So as I put that door top on there, then I got the window. It works. Very happy with it. I didn't do anything in here whatsoever. I just put the belt on there. I did use I did use this, I did use this, and I've taped it on, so it's turning on me a little bit. It's not the best, I just ran, took some tape and taped it on that cardboard. Um, I noticed, this is what I've noticed. As I come in here now, I, this is one more thing I have to fix. As I put the glass down there, I took the top off, put the glass down in there. This is a little too wide, so I'm gonna have to take the grinder and trim that off. Just take that off a little bit because you can see when I put the window in there, there's only so much gap in between the window and the channel going down. So I have to, I'm going to trim that off a little bit. And other than that, everything seems to be fine. Uh, you know, I, the, the, the paper doesn't slide as nice as the glass will, but it, it tells me that it works. You know, I've got my window the shape and size it needs to be. I've got the distance down the side it needs to be. Uh, it goes up inside the top. Uh, the screws, I just need to cut them off so they're at the right length that they only go in far as the metal. Uh, I think we have the window 80% like the rest of the car. We're trying to do it all uh, little piece by piece by piece by piece. Um, I, must, I must say, like I'm, as I'm thinking to myself, you know, we all, I think anybody that watches, we all enjoy the cars. We really do, or I do. I enjoy cars. Um, it's a part of your personality. But when I think about things like that, with the, with the belt and, and pulling the window up and just, you know, 
click it on, whatever I'm going to do to hook it on to hold the window up. When the window goes in, um, the car manufacturers nowadays, we have this, we have that, we have buttons to push. Have you ever owned a car that had power windows that you went to the drive-in or drive-through and your power window didn't work and it was broke and you had to open your door up and try to get out and try to get something to get a coffee or whatever? It's kind of a pain in the ass. Which is easier? Is it easier to go like this or is it easier to just go like this? It's kind of, kind of something you really have, it's just food for thought, you know. Uh, also, the car is lighter. Um, there's, less, there's less work involved. No one has to make that system that fits the inside of the door. It's just a roller in a, in, a, in a channel that holds the glass. It just seems so basic and so simple. I, just, I, I don't understand why we don't use it. Also, if you've noticed, Elvis, it's a, it's like it's, it's one, it's a one-piece car. The, the, do, the fenders are welded on. Uh, everything's welded on. The only thing that comes off is the door and the trunk and the hood. And really, in, in all honesty, if, if you know, car manufacturers like uh, Elon Musk has made that truck um, that's kind of, I think it's cool. It's different, that's for sure. And that's why a lot of people have opinions, because it's different. But the, the reason he can make that truck so cheap or, you know, reasonable is because he hasn't, he don't have to make any dies to make the panels. And that truck is all sort of, it's not flat, obviously, but he has not got into making a big uh, die to make a panel to fit the car. So it takes, it takes a lot less to build that truck than it would to build a car like that because there's no, no dies that he has to make to form the truck. It's kind of a square, flat thing which the panels could be made easily instead of like that. If we took and did what you know, Henry Ford did with the Model T, he made it so everybody could afford it. Well, in my opinion, if, you know, with Elon Musk, with the, with the style of his truck, and with silly, like, not silly things, with simple things like the door that I got going on there with the belt bringing up the window, I mean, you know, it's not, can't, it can't get much easier than that. I guess, I guess you can do this, <laughs> but this seems pretty easy to me, you know, to pull it down. But to make a one-piece car, um, how much faster it would be, and the reason being is that they're making it faster nowadays because now all the cars, you'd bolt them together and they fit. Years ago, they made all the panels, then you had to fit them and shim them and make them work. Like that car had a bunch of shims in it. 60s cars had shims in it. It's probably some of the 70s cars had shims in it. Now they make cars that they fit, you bolt them on, that's it. That's where they lie. It makes it easier to put the car and faster to put the car together. Just imagine if they made a one-piece body that just went down over top of the car, no fitment, no panels to make, to make cut all the sort of the electronics and stuff out of it, how, how easy they could make a car and how cheap they could make it um, for anybody that wanted a car for reliability. Uh, for, to me, I think to, to have a one-piece body or even a, like a one-piece body that you could just glue together, like you obviously wouldn't stamp one body out and just put it on, but you could make something that was two-piece, three-piece, whatever, just glue it together. There'd be no fitment of the fenders, no fitment of much of anything, just make the car and simplify it with the window winders and, and just simplify it, simplify it, simplify it. You can make a car quite reasonable and I think that's probably what it's going to come to and whatever company does that first is probably going to take over what's going on. Uh, we're going to the electric car in 2020, 2032, 2036 or something like that. We're supposed to be going to electric and uh, something to think about. Anyways, I'm going to do, I'm just rambling on because I'm thinking about um, Henry Ford and the car automobile industry and how it's evolving to a one-piece car to simplifying everything so everybody can have something to drive. What I'm going to do with this hood, um, I'm going to guide coat it. Actually, I'm going to look for pinholes first. I'm going to look for pinholes first. Got to get my glasses. And the reason I'm going to do pinholes first, because if I guide coat it before I do pinholes, and I won't find the pinholes, but I thought I had a couple of pinholes. I got a pinhole there, pinhole there, a pinhole there. I've got a couple of pinholes around the edges. I want to grab them even before I start. That way there I know I've, I've got them. Uh, I, I generally do not use, I do not use uh, 
putty. I just used filler, and the reason being is uh, it's, just a, it's just another step that I don't do. I try to cut out the most steps I can, and uh, this is one of the steps that I cut out is using spot putty. So I'm just going to put a little bit of filler on them pinholes before I start. I'm going to block this hood out with an 80 grit. I know I use 4080 on body fill, or that, I don't know if you know or not, if you're new or if you've been 4080 on body fill. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to block this primer out with an 80 grit. And the reason being is it's sharper than a 220 and it's sharper sharper than a 400 obviously and what I'm trying to do is is I'm trying to make this hood as straight as possible and the reason being is uh, this hood is a hood welded on top of a hood I've had to do some work to it I really want the car to look nice so I'm going to try to make it as straight as possible and, I, and I'm saying that the 80 grit will cut it straighter than the 220. That's what I'm saying. And the reason I'm saying it will cut it straighter than the 220 is because it's sharper. That's all. I find that the 220, I'm not ready to paint this. I'm really actually blocking it out to find out if I want to paint it. And uh, what was going on was, is I did some filler work to it and I had some filler on it that I straightened out. It was kind of mocked up for primer it was. And uh, that's where it's at. So right now is the time I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna find out whether it's good enough for paint. And I'm gonna have to prime this again, no doubt in my mind. No doubt in my mind. But if you want something to look really nice, that's what you do. Got a couple spot welds here in the back and I might as well make them look as nice as possible. You can see the spot welds in the back of this hood and I might as well put a little filler on them just to make them look as nice as possible. Got a chance to smoothen it out. Why, why wouldn't I? I just noticed them. There's no, nothing wrong with them and actually most people look for spot welds to know how good a shape the car is in, but this is the back of the hood and, and I might see one of them and think, why didn't I fix that? All right, we'll go with that. That's fine. So I've got some body filler on there. And some people, what was I going to say now, some people don't like the look of the truck that Elon Musk made. But to me, I, I, I think the only reason people don't like it because he's never seen anything like it before, basically. Um, give it some time. What I'm going to do here is I'm going, I got the center of the hood. I'm going to block one side of the hood but what I want to do is I want to leave, I want to make sure that the line is straight. I got body fill there now. I want to try to make the line straight on the hood as possible. And I'm going to run a little tape. I'm going to run a little tape down the center of it so I do not sand past the line. Or I'm just going to make it straight as possible. That's basically all I'm doing with that. And the edges of your, can't see it very well. So I'll, I'll block this side first. And after I block this side, then I'll take, and take this tape and put it on the other side. And that way there, this center of this hood 
will be straight when it comes time me when I when I not straight there. I don't think. Let's put some more on it. Let's try and straighten her out some more. Basically, and it's by eye. How good's my eye this morning? Well, you know what? I'm not going to mess with it for that. I'm just going to bring this over a little bit more. That's all. This is what it is. We'll go with that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and put some guide coat on it. You can use anything for a guide coat. So, I guess today, or to, you know, today, I guess is kind of um, I'm reflecting on um, I'm reflecting on the window because that was yesterday, and what I reflect on that is. Making things as easy as possible to me, um, the, what I've got going on there, and it has been done already, that's for sure, with uh, pulling up the window. Many people have said it's on the 68 Dodge Dirt or something like that. But what a, what a simplified method of putting a window in a car. What a simplified method. And uh, what I feel is that anybody, anybody could do that, and a car manufacturer could do that to make something more reasonable and uh, they can do it more professional or take put a little more into it than I did to make it maybe nicer or simpler or easier or whatever I'm not sure but um, it's quite a simplified door or window mechanism it is to me it is and I I enjoy things that are easier um, it's a lot easier. It was a lot easier doing that um, than it was trying to make a window winder. <laughs> it really is, and you must admit, uh, what would f what what's going to fail? You know, with the is you know is your strap going to break um, when you have electric window and it fails? Costs money to fix it, and the reason being because you have to take it apart. You have to get a new window mechan. You have to get a new uh, electric window mechanism. There's a whole bunch of stuff going on there. I want to. I'll just stay on that side for now. I'm going to let that dry for a second. Also, maybe tomorrow I'm going to I'm going to block the hood out because I want to see what it is. Get some primer on it. But tomorrow I think this is what I'm probably going to do. Um, I'm getting all. I guess I'm getting everything sort of wrapped up. All the stuff I have to do. Somewhat, everything is not finished completely, but it comes, you know, in time. But I have the bumper off my 60 Chrysler. I have a car called the Bad Out of Hell. I did a long time ago. Uh, it had the, this was the bumper that was on the front of it. It was outside when I started doing this car. I never had no bumpers for this car. I got the shell and the chassis. I got from the cow back, and I got that's what I got. Uh, so I used this bumper on the front of Elvis. It's a sick off a 60 Chrysler. It has the ends that are bolted on to the bumper. And uh, it's not in that great a shape. There's some wear and tear underneath there a little bit. But it has these, well, these are bolted on. I don't want them bolted on. I want to, I want to weld that up, fill that in. And also I got a piece in the back here, if you want to come on this side, sweetheart. I got a piece on the back side here that is opened up and I don't like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a piece of metal in here. I'm going to bring it up to here and then bring it around here and weld that on the bumper. And then when it gets chromed, it'll be all one piece. And I'm going to do some work down here to make that right. I'm going to weld this shut. So maybe that's what I'm going to do tomorrow. I'll do some fabrication on the bumper, weld it all up, show you what I'm going to do before I try to get, get it sent to be chromed. I'm not sure what it's going to cost me. I'm going to have to save my pennies, but we'll see what happens. 
Uh, Dane was going to come today, but we're having weather here. We're getting, we're getting lots of rain is what we're getting, and we're having flooding issues. Just walk in our basement, that would tell you the truth. It's flooding issues. He was going to run the wiring harness where we're going to put the wiring harness, maybe drill some holes and finish that up. That means the engine could come back out, and then I can finish welding up the firewall and, and doing that sort of stuff. Uh, also, I have another idea. The piece that goes on the top of the engine. This is the, the plastic piece that goes on top of the intake. Uh, it screws on there. It looks like that. Well, I don't mind that, you know. I don't mind that piece. I don't like this piece here. That piece there and how it's there. I like to have it all round like that. We'll see what happens. But I've taken this piece and I went over to my louvers and I've put it in, the, in my louver piece and it fits perfectly inside the louvers. So fits inside them louvers so this is what I'm thinking I might I might I might put this on top of the engine I might do that or I might make some, make something that's similar to this and put it on top of the engine and have that come up through the louvers so you can see it and then I have all this this give me this is what give me the idea I have all these pieces here that I would chrome and you know how I would chrome it <laughs> with the bad Chad flexible chrome so I could paint this a nice color offset whatever color I paint the the louvers and then I could chrome this and you would still see the engine so it would almost be a oh I forget what they named called named the hood of it if you know the name of the hood of it anyways that could be inside of the louvers and you would see just around the edge of it and uh, shaker that's what it is. It's a shaker hood. So I'd have a, a shaker hood underneath the hood, but there would be louvers, and this would be the shaker when the engine's shaking. That's what it is. It's called a shaker hood. Me and Jolene were trying to figure that out, weren't we, Bibby? Weren't we sparkles? She's sparkling today, boys. She's sparkling today. So I'm going to take, and take the 80 grit, and I'm going to run off the guide coat on there, and I just want to find out if the hood's straight or not because if the hood's straight, and then I can throw some primer on it, just like the trunk lid. The trunk lid, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm hoping that the trunk lid is good so when I flip it over, I can sand it and paint it. I might even do that with the hood and the trunk, just get them out of here and paint them and be done with it. And it's just one step closer. Uh, also, I do not mind if it's not perfect, then I can just sand the paint off and, just, and then put another coat of paint on it because there's a there's chance of less dirt of painting sanded paint than there is primer. This primer holds a lot of dirt and uh, you know just as well as I do, um, the hood is what we're going to be looking at and uh, that's what we're going to be you know, running our, head, our face down over as we're driving the car. So we really want the hood as clean as possible. I don't really want to buff the car. I do not want to do that. It's so much work. I want to paint it and drive it. <laughs> Basically, that's what I would like to do. But we're going to take and sand this off. I got some 80 grit. And then we're going to run it off here, see what goes on. I put my glasses on. Hope everybody's having a good Friday. Because we are. We're having a good Friday. And what I've done here, there's been a bit of body work to it. And what I want to do is I just want to make sure the hood is straight for me to say, I can turn it over and do the work to the underneath of it. There's a bunch of work that has to be done on the underneath of it. I have two cross, I have two cross members. I have one cross member that goes in here, and one goes across the back, and one goes across there. That will be painted the, the coral color. And then the rest of the hood will be painted with the, the rock guard, or done with the rock guard, and uh, will look just like the trunk lid. And then we can paint the underneath of the louvers any color we want with a shaker, maybe. It's fun how, <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> Jolene said to me the other day, she said, you, you try to make everything so simple, but you do so much customizing that it's not simple. Like the windows, I mean, that's, I'm simplifying pulling up the window, but yet, you know, you've changed the door, you've changed the, the headlights, you changed the bumper. You, it's, it's kind of backwards. <laughs> I'm simplifying, but yet customizing. Just run it over here. You can see how the sandpaper, the 80 grit, is telling me whether I've got it straight or not. On. 
when you're blocking something, you should run it all directions. to find out if it's all feeling good. This is where I had some work done, so that's where I started first. And it's easy to tell if something's wrong, because the guide code will tell you. And I'm saying that the 80 grit will tell me quicker and straighten it out much faster than a 220 will. That's why I'm using it. My method is not for everybody, it's for me. If you like it, take it. If you don't, throw it away. I'm going to get a piece of, I'm going to get a rag. I'm going to get a rag. Elvis has got windows, man. So go to the dollar store, buy yourself some of that. I don't know what it's what it's called. It's some kind of. It's not a Bristol board. It's a. What would you call it? Sign board. Yeah. Not looking bad. You can see you got a little low. Like you can tell where it's being sanded. The highest part of the flood, the lowest part of the flood, and the metals, the ocean floor. That's basically the end of it. The guide coat simplifies everything. I have to do the whole car like this because I do not know what the car is like. I threw it in primer. It's been many years that it's been in primer. And I have to do the whole car because I've probably primed it premature because I was done with it for, that for now. I was done with it. So tomorrow we'll do the, the bumper. We'll play with the bumper and, and, and do that and show you how I'm going to weld that up so we can chrome it and have it have it uh, a one-piece bumper. I don't feel like there's much to it, but you, but you have to do it. You have to do the work to get it done. I did the 60... I did the, the bumper on the back of that. I made it one piece. And it was fun to do, I guess. Makes it look different. Some people notice and some people don't. I guess the only person that would really know is somebody that's diehard Chrysler Dodge. Chrysler Dodge. That's the only people that would really know. Come take a look. Highest part of the flood. All the gray is the highest part of the flood. Highest part of the flood, lowest part of the flood. Lowest part of the flood. And then we're going to try to bring down the highest part of the flood to get the lowest part of the flood. Once I get it there, then I know I have something. If I hit metal, uh, I don't like that idea because we're down to the ocean floor. Or I'm not saying I don't like it, it's just that I'm hoping the rest of the flood is in the same spot. Now, if this hood, if this hood was, like I, I've got four or five coats on it, not sure, four or five. If this hood blocked out and I seen no, if, if, the, if the flood all looked like that, and it was in an 80 grit, I would guide coat it and then go to a 220, and then go to a 400 and paint it, if I had enough product on it. Not sure if I have that or not, but that's what I'm doing. I've said it once and I'm going to say it again. The reason I'm using the 80 grit because it's sharper and it will straighten it better than 220.
sure. Just going lightly on it, letting the paper do the work. I'm not bearing down on it at all. Jolene bought me these blocks. I really enjoy I didn't get a long enough one. I wanted a longer one. We got, she got me a, a longer one, but it had the Velcro on it. Not interested in the Velcro one. I think the paper's more money to buy the Velcro. But, and how to get that sandpaper off without the, the sticky sticking to it, go to your heat gun, just heat it up, it'll peel right off. And you must admit, they must have made the Velcro ones because the people didn't realize they could take a heat gun and get off the sticky stuff. <laughs> you know, basically, people must have been tired and had the sticky stuff on it, couldn't get it off, couldn't get it off. Well, let's make a Velcro one. Well, how about grab the heat gun? Make it easy on yourself. That's how stuffs are made. Somebody has an issue with something. So the hood that came from Jolene's Volvo, well, I started Jolene's car with a Volvo. The, ho the hood that came off that Volvo is in the center of this hood. I just cut it and made it fit and welded it on. You can do this with a DA if you want to. I have before, but it's the hood and I want to make it as straight as possible. The reason I say you can do it with a DA is because you have a guide coat, as long as you're holding your DA flat and moving it around quickly. I'm tempted, but I'm going to block this out, trying to make it look as good as possible. I'm tempted, believe me. have a little spot there where it rolls up. I didn't want to tape that off. Last time I taped it off, I kind of made a little gully for myself. I didn't want that. So I'll know if the hood is perfect if I hit no metal and hit no body fill and all the guide coat is gone. The hood should be absolutely perfect. Should be. Or I don't say perfect, but good enough for me. That's what I'm hoping for. Wish I had a little longer block, but I don't. We're losing some snow today, but we're gonna gain some ice. We've got ice from all the way down to the house. We got ice. I was hankering for a beer yesterday, boys. I was hankering for a beer yesterday, but we're, we're not into March yet. We picked the right month though, didn't we? It's the shortest month. Pick the right month. And it's good to, you know, to do that once in a while, I think. Just to show that you don't have to rely on something. Or make yourself feel like you don't have to rely on anything. But it sure is nice once in a while. I'm going to grab a new piece of paper just for the hay of it. Just for the hay of it. It feels not too bad.
Yep, you want something straightened out, just go to a little sharper paper. Go to a little sharper paper. That'll straighten it out for you. And believe you I, I said it already once already, I can guide coat that again, hit that with 220. I could guide coat it again, hit with 400 and paint it right after I did it with, an, with the 80 because the guide coat is showing me if the scratches are still there or not. Showed me right there that I got too close with the paint gun and I, and I made a, uh, what's, in, what's that fish called? A, eh, it's been a long time, a mackerel. A mackerel's got that, that look on it. How do I know that? Because I used to go down and check the old nets in Kingsport. People would catch mackerel and see what they look like. They got that look. They got that black striped look on it. Everything's going pretty good right now. Hood's looking fantastic. Just like Jolene. Fantastic. Got to thank everybody for all the votes and all the things on Jet, jet Setter. It, it was amazing. I must say, it brought us all together as a team, you know. I, I feel like we're all a team. Um, everybody was voting. Everybody was commenting. It was good. Or it is good. So if you feel in any way that you haven't got something straight, grab a, a sharper piece of paper. Generally, your, your 220s and your 400s and that stuff are for polishing. Um, your 80, your 40 and your 80s are for getting things straight. And it's, it sands so much nicer with the 80 grit because you know you're you're sanding the primer off with the, with the 220 grit. It works it works so hard to get it off. Get a bit of the rest of it. Talking to myself. Sure, I get the rest of her. It up, all right? Huh? Got a little bit right in there. I'm going to take this off. And I'll go to the center of the hood. Stay there for a minute. Yeah, I'm so happy with the window, you know, to do something like that and have it work out, worked out good. And I'm happy that you got to see the full process. It wasn't something that, uh, you know, that was. It's something anybody can do on that window, you know. Anybody can do that. Run some square tubing down inside your car and uh, make a window. Pretty basic stuff.
three inch quarter square tubing. I'm saying that that panel right there is A1. That's what I'm saying. 80 grit, no metal, no guide coat. I'm saying it's A1. That's what I'm saying. See what that one says. Beautiful. Beautiful, I say. Just like Jolene. Beautiful. Now I have the tape on this side because I don't want to go over top of the line. Just want to more or less stay on this side. Trying to keep it everything straightened out. That's all. High part of the flood, low part of the flood. So basically that high part of the flood has to come down to the low part to, be, to make me happy. So in order, if anything goes wrong and there's still guide coat there and I hit metal, you, you have to understand that I have to scratch that off and I have to put filler. That's what would happen to make myself satisfied. That was metal. And if you're doing a if you're doing a a body job on a car, you're doing a body job, done it many times, run it off with a DA, get your guide coat off, make it look the best you can, and go for it. But where I'm building an old car, um, you do it as many times you need be to get it where it needs to be, in my opinion. The car was primed to set outdoors. That's what it was primed for, so I could set it outdoors. Now the primer's for to straighten it out. Or see what, what, what's wrong with it and what's, what's good about it. Working our way down, getting that low out. That's what the primer's for. And if I didn't have enough, you know what would happen? I'd have to put some filler in it or prime it again. And generally, I go to the filler because faster than priming. And I know I'm okay blocking because I have not hit the ocean floor yet. And the ocean floor is the metal. Can't go further than the metal. It's funny when when I was put the, had the hood on Elvis, I had a little spot here, back here, where the cowl was a little bit higher than the hood. And I decided I'm going to leave that because it was only that much. I really didn't want to start adding a bunch of hood fill back here, or cutting that and dropping it down, welding it and filling it. But in the end, when I blocked the hood out, it needed a little bit of fill across there. So that was good. That was good for the hood. You can see how, right now, how the guide coat is still there, right? And I did put some filler back there, but we'll see. So 
going to do the top side so I can turn it on, get the top side done. I don't want to do the underneath and then get that painted and then do, try to do the top. I want to get the top done, get it primed so it's, so it's good enough for paint, do the underneath, and then I can flop it over, sand it, and paint it. That's what I'm hoping to do. That's my method, or that's my, what I'm going for. And I might paint it off the car, because I don't care if I paint it a couple times. It does not matter. Getting closer. Also, think about the amount of paper that I would use if I was 220ing this compared to if I was using 80. That's the stuff I think about when I'm doing something. Think about the material that I use to make the window compared to the material and the time it would to make the roller system to make in a belt that pulls up the window. Think about the time of the design, well, how much material you're using, how long it takes. That's the way I think. Time is money, and uh, that's how I think. That's how I, you know, that's how I realize, you know, when, when Elon Musk bring the truck out, the, the shape of it, um, it took away so much time to make it because of the shape of it, and money because of the panels. And I like to do the exact same thing on the car builds but I like to customize and make things different, which takes my time. But that's the fun part to me, is to make something that's different. That's the fun part, um, to make something different. Um, but to spend less time and money doing it. So for me to we have to think we have to think about it as I'm doing it I guess that's the reason why I do it I think about it if I was going to put an electric window in it I'd have to buy or go find so I have to I have, I'm going to have to buy it I'm going to, have to spend money or I'm going to have to find electric uh, roll up window system if I find one I've got to take my time to take it out if I buy one I've got to take the money that I've earned with my time to go buy one, basically. Or I could just stay in place, which I did, stay in place, and make something from what I have 
that is cheaper than both and still have the same outcome. I've got a window. <laughs> I hope that, that more or less explains what I'm about, I guess, and how I do things. And if you know, if you think, well, go get a winder and put a window winder. Well, to get a window winder, you have to got to take it out of a car somehow. Someone's got to take it out. So you got to go get a door. You got to you got to go get the tools to get it out. Then 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 when you get it back, then you got to try to see if you can modify it to fit in the car that you've that you're putting it in. Or I got to go try to find somebody with a '56 Ford. And I got to try to, or 56 Mercury, and try to buy it from them, or you know, get it from them. Then I'd have to modify it because that that car had a a vent window. Um, that car has no more vent window anymore, which I think it makes it a little bit more unique. There's no vent window in that car, which everybody else has vent windows. That's fine. So I've made what I need in a very short amount of time to get my ride on the road. That's what I like to do. You have to factor all that time in when, when you throw that idea out there, well, it would be cheaper to do this or cheaper to do this. Well, you'll have to take uh, I got a piece of metal that I got in the shop, uh, a belt, and a piece of Pepsi glass, which I probably shouldn't have ruined because of the window. I should have went to the dollar store and bought the cardboard that I had. Could have used that, been cheaper. But you must admit, what I have done there is cheaper and works. And. I can use my brain to make it uh, appealing to the eye. So like I suggested, maybe I can have a strap that has Elvis written on it. Maybe I can have a strap that has diamonds on it. Maybe I can have a whatever. But you must admit, what, what's easier, this or this? <laughs> And think of the time that I spent compared to going and finding and, and tearing out a window winder that does not work for the car. Or spending my money that I have to take my time to figure out how to apply it. All the ideas are great that people have, and it provokes, one, one thing I do like about doing the videos, it provokes thought, Every, you know, everybody has a thought or an idea, it provokes that, yes it does. When it provokes your thought, take it a, a step further, take it a step further, and ask yourself, is it better 
Is it cheaper? Is it faster? I always, I always do that, you know, if someone gives me, a, gives me an idea, Jolene gives me many ideas, I have to stop in my brain and ask myself whether it's faster, cheaper, can I do it that way, can whatever, I have to, have to stop and ask yourself. When I was doing the windows, I had to ask myself, should I buy a power window and put in it? Eh, thought about it. Well, I have to pay for it or have to go get it. The back window, when I did not have the back window for the car. I thought about it, you know, hey, you should put the back window in it. Well, <laughs> if I have to go get a back window, so I'm, I'm, someone's going to charge me money for it. Have to go look for it. Then I have to try to put it in the car. Well, when I had the back window section there, I had a back window. Didn't have to pay for it. It was already there. I had to do the work to get the panoramic window in the back. Yes, I did. But I had to also do the work to get the back window in that I had. So, in the end, the window that I have in it won because I had it, didn't have to spend money, didn't have to go get it, and there it was. Do the work. That's what happens. Hood's turning out just like you, Jolene. So when you're building your car, think things over. What's, what's necessary, what's not necessary, what's cheaper, what can you get, what, you get, you know, what, what money do you have to spend, what time do you take. Now if I had to take and get the back window, I'd have to do a video going to get in the window and taking it back out, taking it out. Well, we, got the window, we got the video of putting the window in and getting it done. And spending no money. That's where the where the coming the, where where I, my brain goes when it comes to make something. I always try to think of the cost, the time, and where do I go get it, and how much am I going to pay for it, and what's really going to matter. Driving in a car like that, we're going to want the windows down anyways. We're going to want everybody to see us, aren't we, baby? Huh? Had some friends get a hold of us, uh, Lincoln Nation. They're, they have a 56 Thunderbird. 56 Thunderbird. They said it was kind of a basket case. And he was just kind of playing around, asking, you know, our opinion, and not that our opinion matters. Just, just checking things out, having a chat. Um, would he go get the original? Would he go get the original engine for it? But or use a six-cylinder that he already has, that's in the shop and it's all freshened up. And he has a six-cylinder there. And the first thing I said, I would use a six cylinder that I had because I have it. it. It would be different. And I would take my brain to the carburation system on it. You know what I mean? You could make it look so cool. Open the hood up on a Thunderbird, you expect to see a V or a 312, but you now you see a six cylinder with two carbs or three carbs on it. Um, it's kind of a good, you know, I think you would spend the money on making it your, your own then running around trying to find an engine that you want to put in it and spend money on. He has a six cylinder, why not throw it in there? Make it work, and then if you're running around to swap meets or something, if you find an intake that would make it look special, jump on it. And that way there you have something that no one else has. Kind of a cool idea, I think. That's how I would go about it. I would not go to spend my money on the 312 because I didn't have it. No, I would not. I would use what I had. And if I found something to make the, the six-cylinder look cool, that's what I'd do. And that there, 
can take any amount of time it wants to because you're spending the time making the car, fixing the car. So basically, um, your time can be spent where it should be is fixing the car. And then when it comes time to getting it running, you can find a, an intake for it anywhere at any time, you know, at a swap meet. It could be something that you're on the hunt for. There's, no, there's, a, there's nothing better than the thrill of the hunt, you know, the thrill of the hunt for something that you, you know, you want, I guess, or you think you need. There's nothing better. I hunted Jolene for six months. Nothing better. It was worth every bit of it. And what I mean by hunt is try to be as nice as possible to lure her my way, you know? Nice as possible to lure her my way. I hope my conversation is not boring you. <laughs> I hope it's not. But I have to give you something, you know. We have to have a little bit of conversation while I'm saying this hood out, right? Just trying to get the guide coat off. Thinking and talking at the same time. Time is money. So when it comes for me to work on the project, I always think about what I have. I don't have to spend the time going to get something, buying something, you know, just use what I have. Sometimes it works out for the best. And the cars that I build are one of a kind. No one else has anything that we have. We're, we're building one of a kind. We're not trying to impress, our, impress anybody but ourselves. Having fun, doing what we're doing, what we love. Love you, Jolene. Doing what we love. And that's working on cars. and using what we have. And if you feel like you have to have what the car had originally, you go for it, you most certainly go for it. But there's, there's a lot of fun and enjoyment and creativity when it comes to building a car from what you have. That's how the green goblin, that's how the green goblin come about. I built it out of two cars that I had. I really enjoyed the roof on one car and I really enjoyed the body style in another car, and both of them cars were given to me. And I took my time and my money and uh, put them together. They got married in holy matrimony. What's that called? Mackerel. Mackerel. I mackled it at Jolene's quick, man. She's quick on her feet. She's got no shell, as you can tell. Jet setter will be found out tonight. We'll know. We got our fingers crossed, but let's face it. Jolene's our jet setter no matter what. She did a great job. Fantastic job. No matter what. Is that right, baby? Yeah. No matter what. Fantastic. I'm going to guide coat the other side. Eh, no, I'm gonna block this off with the hay. I wanna peel that tape, I'm gonna, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put a little tape on the centerpiece because now I'm very happy with the hood. And the reason I'm happy, because there's no metal showing, there's no guide coat showing. Fantastic. But I wanna run some guide coat on the other side to let it dry while I'm sanding the front. Good thing to do, I think. Keep myself rolling here. What are we at, baby? One four. One four? One four. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take some tape and run it on the other side of this tape. That way there, we keep our line straight. I can peel the other side off and guide coat. That's just going to get our, our line going down our hood straight, or keep it straight as possible. Yeah, I can 
gonna leave that there for now. So if you want straight lines on your car, tape them off one side, then do the other side. I'm going to leave that there because I haven't got that there yet. I'll put some guide code on this side, and then we'll go to the computer. Pin hold at first because I can see the pin holes. Once you get the guide code on, you cannot see the pin holes. I enjoy doing the pinholes after the primer because I do not start blocking into the other material. You must admit, if you, if you do body work or if you do this sort of stuff, when you have a few pinholes and you have body work, that's a ram, well, obviously you have body work there because there's pinholes there. If you have body work there and you have pinholes and you start putting that putty on top of your filler, it messes with all the surface area around it. It does. And uh, I don't like that because it messes things up, gets you going backwards. So I like to prime, then do the pinholes and block the pinholes after the primer because the primer gives you one surface and I enjoy not messing with my body fill. It's frustrating to get something feeling good and then come back over with a primer and have it have it not feel, or come back over with a putty and not have it feel good. It's no more frustrating than something like that. So that's why I do that. And uh, take it if you want it, and don't take it if you don't. It's up to you, up to you. But that's what I like to do, and it cuts down on that. It does, it does. So basically that's where I'm going with that. I'm gonna get the hood straight today. If, well, if I get the whole hood looking like this with the 80 grit with no metal showing, no filler showing, I might just, uh, I might just leave it. I might just leave it and then turn it over and then do the underneath because I will not need any more material on the top of this to make this look right. I can guide coat it and I can 220, 400 it, guide coat it, 400 it and then paint it. But if I hit filler or if I hit any metal, then I'm probably going to throw a coat of primer on it just to give a coat of primer on it, just so I don't hit it to get block it again. But right now, at the present moment, this feels as smooth as Jolene. Well, not that smooth, but if you know what I'm trying to say, it's all good that the hood feels that way. Um, it's a hood welded on top of a hood, and it's feeling good. Let's go give away a hat or a shirt. So I'm going to continue on with that, uh, and then tomorrow I'm thinking that we might weld some pieces on the bumper. I might end up. I'm going to weld some pieces on the bumper because the bumper needs to be dealt with. I do not like this part to here that's, I don't like this part. I want it closed off here, I think, uh, just so you don't see in there. That's all. The window is, I like it. Uh, I was thinking that maybe these, these might be in the way of that metal piece going down in there, but them are at the perfect distance where it lets the metal go right down in behind it, doesn't it, baby? Mm -hmm. Perfect. Uh, the belt on the inside, it works when you pull it up. What's easier? You have to ask yourself. And what weighs less? You have to ask yourself. And what is cheaper? You have to ask yourself. Them's the questions that I ask myself when I build things. Them's the questions. Whether it's conventional or not, that doesn't, that, that, that doesn't cross my mind. Whether someone else has done it or well, it, well it, you know, that doesn't cross my mind. What goes across my mind is basically, you know, do I have the stuff to make it? How easy is it? Um, is it cheaper? Is it faster? Um, is it whatever? And when I start doing stuff like that, that's when it's time to become creative. Uh, having no, no uh, vent window in that car is being creative. When someone sees that car, they're going to ask, well, how would you make one, one window? Well, there's always a vent window in a 55 or 56. Well, that's what it is. 524 comments. Thank you very much, everybody. We appreciate it. Press the start. Mm -hmm. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. Larry Taylor, let you. 
Let you do as you please. Let me do as I please. Thank you very much, Larry Taylor. Um, basically, you put in a comment, so you deserve a hat or a shirt because you've taken your time to put in a comment. Um, yeah, so that's where my brain goes when I build stuff. Is not about money, not about anything other than what I have to do, what I need to get done. And uh, when, 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 you're, when you're thinking of things, think of what it costs you, where you've got to go get it, how much it's going to cost you, how long it's going to take you to get it, do you have to run somewhere to get it, and then go to your brain and say, can I make it with what I have in the shop? <laughs> can I make it? Well, basically that's where I go. Can I make what I need? And uh, as I'm building the car, as I build any car that we do here, uh, I use what I have and basically go from there. And uh, as soon as I have to go to the shop and go get something, that is taking my time. And when I have to buy something, it's taking the money away from the rest of the build. And believe me, I get a lot of satisfaction out of no money compared to buying something and still have to spend the time. Have a good one, everybody. Tomorrow we'll weld up a bumper.